Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I am Jenny and today we're gonna have a lot of fun because we are going to plant some tulips and some daffodils and some hyacinths into some containers. So we are back here at the patio and if you will remember um, way back in the fall, we were talking about, you know, obviously the fall is when you get your spring flowering bulbs and Proven Winners was so gracious to send us bulbs out of their new collection of spring flowering bulbs. So th this past fall, Proven Winners offered spring flowering bulbs on their in their online store that you could order. They sent us some so that we could try them out. Remember, we are North Carolina, a zone 7B. What do I have to do to my spring flowering bulbs that um, require a cold, long cold winter? I have to put them in the refrigerator. Um, yes, because tulips, certain daffodils, certain spring flowering bulbs, certain alliums have to have a period, weeks upon weeks, of nice, cold, frigid temperatures. Here in North Carolina, where I am, I just do not get those consistent cold temperatures. Yes, it gets cold, but it's not consistently cold for 10 to 12 weeks at a time. So when Proven Winners sent us these bulbs, I immediately put them into my refrigerator. Jerry and I, uh, this fall, I think it was like November, Black Friday, whatever it was, you know, they'll, they'll do all these whatever, President's Day, I don't know, these holidays, and the um, they'll put appliances on sale. So we really got the cheapest refrigerator um, that we could find. We don't need a freezer, but it was a freezer-fridge combo. It's cheaper to get the, the combo. And we put it out in our garage, and the main purpose of this refrigerator is to hold my spring flowering bulbs in the winter so that they can have a nice winter in the refrigerator come mid-February, early March, like right now, I can go ahead and pull them out and I can get them either in the ground or containers. So that is what we are going to do today. So much fun. Back here on the patio, um, of course, if you remember, I have my two unique stone. These are the um, Weston urns. I love them. Um, I've had a couple of people, a very common question is, do the unique stone planters, do they have drainage holes in them? Yes. If it is listed as a planter, an urn, um, a jardinier, those kinds of things, if, if plants are intended to go in it, Unique Stone has a hole in it. So you don't need to worry about that. I have gone ahead and they are completely empty. Had some violas in here, like a mixed arrangement. Took them out, they are done. Their time is, is done for us. So it is, they are gone and I need to get some soil in here. So I have my Proven Winners Potting Soil for me, that's the best one that works the best for us. So that's all that I use. And then my land and sea compost. So if you remember, um, I like to, I always tell you to start with completely fresh soil in your containers at the beginning of seasons. And I'm already making a mess. And Jenny's short, so thankfully there's a wall here. So I can just hop up here. Always start with fresh soil every single season because um, that way the plants have lots of room for their roots to grow. So we're going to get these guys filled up a good bit of the way. Last spring I read in one of the gardening magazines that I get that they recommend, a horticulturist that they were talking about, said that he loves to put compost in his containers because it really gives the plants an additional shot of food. Did that last year, it turned out marvelously well. I don't know, because this is my first time planting tulips and bulbs in these Weston urns, um, I don't know at the end when the tulips are done if their roots will have completely taken over this pot and that when I get ready to plant my spring summer arrangement in here, if I will have to start completely with fresh soil or can I still use the soil in here? Now I know I just said always start fresh, but these tulips are going to be in here for maybe 
six weeks at the most, eight weeks at the most. So they're not gonna be in here for months on end like my annuals typically are. Um, so I will just play that by ear, but I am gonna go ahead and put compost in here because it just makes all the difference in the world. So once I have my compost in here, I'm just gonna give it a little zhuzh, as we say, to mix in some of the potting soil and the compost all together, mix it in there. Now, I am going to be using three different tulips um, in these two containers. So I have a Western urn on this end and I have a Western urn right over there. I'm gonna plant them the exact same. I have three tulips. All of them are in the red family. A little bit of a variation on them. Um, I'll put all the information up on the screen. So we have World's Favorite we're gonna use. We have Van Eyck we're going to use. And we have Parade. There are 20 in each bag so there's three bags that is 60 uh well oh duh right there's 20 in a bag there's two urns <laughs> guess how many we're going to use in each one 10. <sighs> it's getting towards the end of the day y'all my brain's a little <laughs> a little fried so first we have parade now how do you know if you have a really nice healthy um bulb because that's really important to know if you're planting healthy bulbs or if it's a dud and it's not going to do anything and you're wasting your time so let me show you so you can see here that this bulb is nice and pure white it's very firm to the touch it's not squishy it is not soft so it is a great shape we can go ahead and plant this and i know that it will do really well and i'm going to plant it exactly like this so the tip points up the bottom, this is where the roots will come out. It goes down in the bottom. I will just nestle them down into the soil so they're nice and snug. Then once everybody is in, then I know that I can come back with some potting soil on top of that. And then I use my fresh mulch on top to make it look nice and pretty. Um, so that is what we're gonna do. But first, before we put our bulbs in, we're going to throw some bulb tone in there. This is, of course, the Espoma fertilizer, which is specifically for bulbs. And so we're just gonna go in and sprinkle it in and give it a nice, healthy dose of food. There we go. All right, so I'm just gonna go in here and get 10 of each variety in, and then I'll meet you back here in a second. All the sweet little babies are nice and tucked in and they're just nestled down in there their little heads are poking up no big deal we're going to take our proven winners potting soil and give it um, about an inch or two on top of it and then when i come back with my mulch that'll be in another inch or two or so in there so they'll be nice and submerged we're still going to have pretty cool temperatures here in north carolina uh, like at night we're getting into we're still in, in freezing temperatures in the low 30s at night Next week, I think we have a night of like 21, 22. So we're still pretty cool during the days. It can, it can warm up here and there, but this is a great time to go ahead and get those bulbs that have been dormant all season long into, you know, in the refrigerator, obviously, and get them out because out with my bulbs that will survive here in the in the warm temperatures, my snowdrops, my jonquils, they are already starting to come up and put some little buds on. So I know that's a good sign for them to come out. Perfect timing. And yeah, I don't have any mulch with me right now, so I'll have to go get some in a little bit. But I'm going to get this one planted and then we'll move on to the next one. And then I've got some hyacinths that I want to show you. They're really fun. And I've been doing a little experiment with them as well. So don't go anywhere.
just like that, we have got both of the uh, Western urns planted with 30 tulip bulbs each. It is going to be spectacular come a few weeks from now. Cannot wait to see it. It's going to be gorgeous. Obviously, I will keep you updated on that. Only thing I need to do with these, as like I said earlier, is to get some mulch, top dress it, and then water them in well, and they are good to go. Now, you will see that I have brought another unique stone uh, little urn over here. This little urn goes with the hippo that is over there at the barn. I had brought it over um, during the winter just because it had some, um, it had a mixed arrangement in there. It had some violas and pansies and so forth. And since we were closed during December, January, I said, well, why leave it over there when nobody can see it? I'll bring it over here where we can enjoy it. Now, what we are going to do, we are going to plant some blue jacket hyacinth bulbs in here. Super excited about this because, again, I have Proven Winners gave me a bag of 10 of them. But, gosh, it would have been like early January and I was thinking, you know what? People force hyacinth bulbs all the time and you can grow them with just water. So kind of like a hydroponic situation going on. The only thing that it requires, though, is that you have a special vase. They're called hyacinth. I think they're just called hyacinth vase. And so, of course, I went to my go-to place to find those kind of basic needs, Amazon, and I found it was a package of six vases. And so I ordered them, they came, and I have been growing them on my windowsill in the kitchen. I've done them two at a time and they're a week apart. And it has been so much fun to watch these sweet little bulbs just wake up within, I think it was three days, I could see roots coming out of the bottom of the first two bulbs. So that's what is so unique about those little vases, those little bud vases, is that it will hold the bulb and it has a narrow neck so that only the bottom of the bulb is touching the water. If you were to submerge, you know, or have that bulb sitting completely in water, obviously it's going to rot and not do well. But when you have just the base of the bulb touching water, those roots, man, they wake up and go crazy. So the difference between like three days and a week, the roots were just bananas. And so uh, then a week later, I started two more. They are quickly catching up to those first two. No flowers yet, but I think we're getting close. So I have four more bulbs that I can put into this little urn. So I thought this would be fun is to get them going in here. And then once they are getting ready to bloom, I will probably take it back over to the barn and set it up on top of the hippo. The thing with hyacinth bulbs is that when they're kind of waking up, it's, it is nice to kind of give them a little bit of a slow start so that their roots have plenty of time to get established. So started over here before I take it over to the nursery because I could see somebody going, oh, well, what's in here or a child or something to start digging and then they dig up the bulbs and then the whole thing is kind of a disaster. So, so what I'm going to do is the same MO that I did before. Um, I do think I'm going to try a little experiment and not put any land and sea in here. I'm all about experiments. See what happens, what doesn't happen, what works, what doesn't work. So this is a pretty shallow bowl. So I'm just going to put the proven winners in here, some bold tone, and then those hyacinths. I went and grabbed a tub full of mulch over there at the nursery. So now we can do the final top dressing. And this sweet little scalloped urn only needed one handful and it took care of that. So there we go. We're gonna put this on the ground so that it doesn't fall off and break because that would just make me, oh, really sad. So again, the reason we use mulch, I always top dress my containers in mulch. One, it makes it look pretty. Two, it insulates the whole container. Um, so here we are in the wintertime, so it'll, it just regulates the temperatures, that's all. 
both in the winter and the summer, regulates the temperatures. For us, especially um, in the summertime, one thing that it really helps do is it helps to retain moisture so that the containers don't dry out as fast. The evaporation process doesn't work nearly as fast when you have the mulch. The plants really respond very well to it. And I know that weeds are not a huge problem in containers, but they do happen. And so this essentially eliminates any kind of weeds that you would have in your containers. So I always do that, but especially just right now, it just dresses it up. It look, makes it look nice. Um, when you water, you know, if I had like a plant in here instead of just the bulbs, when you water, the soil doesn't splash up on the plants, you know, simple things like that. So this one, we're going to go to the other one and then we're going to plant some daffodils and one more tulip variety in the ground. One last little uh, planting before this afternoon project is wrapped up. I don't know about y'all, but there are very few days that I have in my schedule where I can do a whole day of gardening. Like that would be awesome. But you know, you're a parent, you have school with your kids, you, you've got work, you've got other obligations, you've got appointments, yada, yada, yada. So, you know, life seems to be moving faster and faster these days. So I don't have days that I can just spend in the garden. I would love to, I just don't have that uh, luxury right now. So what I do is I find pockets of time to come out here and do this. So like this morning, right? We had our normal day at the house. We did school. The kids had all, you know, all their school activities and assignments and things that we had to get taken care of. Brenna had her puppy obedience class today. So we had to go do that. So I have about two hours this afternoon before supper has to get going that I was able to come out here. The weather is great. It feels wonderful out here. So find those moments, even if it's just five minutes to get outside and just sit, do it. It's great. It just, it does something for your soul to get outside and to be in nature um, and just be surrounded by God's beautiful creation. So there's your little tip for the day. Now, moving back on, we've got two daffodils and we've got another tulip. So the two daffodils are um, Mount Hood and Gentle Giant. Now, I think I'm getting this straight, so just forgive me if I mess it up. It'll be on the screen correct. Mount Hood, I believe, is a pure white gorgeous color. Then Gentle Giant is a white with a yellow orange cup center. And then our tulip is Golden Parade, which is a beautiful, uh, soft kind of a buttercup yellow. What I'm going to do is kind of mix them all together in the space right there. Uh, that is my little pocket of annuals when the pathway out of the patio, right? So I tried to set the camera up so that you could get an idea of where we are. So I'm dancing with the camera, excuse me. So obviously right here, we've got that, um, the Weston urn that we just did. Then these are the gardenias in the back with my nine bark, and then the pathway that leads out through the arch. I know sometimes it's hard to get a little bit of perspective of where we are and where we're working. So I thought maybe that would help a little bit, that little pocket um, behind the rocks right here. So that's what we're gonna do. I still have um, 20 of the tulips, but I only have 10 of each of the daffodils. I'm just gonna mix them in. I'm not gonna do like layered effects of, um, you say like Mount Hood, Gentle Giant, then the, um, uh, the parade because they're they're golden parade because they're all going to be the same height. They're all the colors match and blend beautifully well. I don't know exactly on the timing of them, so that way even if they don't bloom all at the same time, which would be kind of good because then you have a continuous display of color. But if they do bloom all at the same time, then that's great too because you've got all these different heights and colors and assortment. So that's what I'm going to do. Basically, we're just going to kind of throw them in the ground and go for it. I have my hand trial. I'm just going to pull the soil back and plop them in. Again, I'm going to experiment. I might just take some biotone and sprinkle it on the whole top of the bed. I may plop it down in the hole. I may not use it. Ha! Well, I'm just going to surprise myself and see what happens.
right, my friends. So the little uh, bulb planting period for this afternoon is over. It is complete. I've got both of the western urns planted. I have got the little scalloped rim planter full of those hyacinth bulbs. And then behind me, I have got the two different daffodils and the tulips in there. So I think it is going to be a very bright and cheery spring back here. A huge thank you to Proven Winners for sending us those bulbs. Cannot wait to see how they do back here. It's going to be fantastic. Um, I will say that spring is definitely knocking on the door um, because if you've followed us for any length of time, you know that back here on the patio, I have my David Austin roses and they're starting to put out little shoots of green growth on the stems. So spring is coming for sure. Um, in fact, I got an email from David Austin that my new edition roses that are going to be coming in just a few weeks. So probably just like a week or two, but I would think by next week they would probably be here. So of course we will do a video exactly on how to plant a bare root rose because we had great success last year and I've got to do some rearranging of our current ones. But uh, that just gives you a little idea of things to come back here. I still have some tidying up to do. We'll do a video on that, just a little bit of, you know, prep before we go into full on spring. Little things I just want to do here and there. It's what we call piddling in the garden. That's what mom and I call it. I know some of you may have a different different definition of piddling, uh, but for us it just means to do a little bit here and a little bit there. And today was a great day to go piddle in the garden and get these spring flowering bulbs planted. As always, thanks so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.